Welcome back to the Kiwi Wedding Podcast. My name is Lydia and I'm a wedding photographer based in Tamaki Makoto, Auckland. On today's podcast, I'm chatting to Stacey. She had an amazing celebration for her wedding, which was more like a multi-day festival kind of vibe. Cacao ceremonies, wood fire saunas, flowers they foraged from a flower farm beautiful colourful dresses and exactly that dreamy vibe that you're imagining. You definitely have to go over to Instagram and check out some of their photos. We chat through the whole love story, planning, experience and the magical week that it was. So lovely to chat to Stacey. I saw her photos pop up on Instagram. She's kind of a friend of a friend. Well, my sister is really good friends with one of her best friends. And that friend and Stacey own Soul Bowl together, which you may have heard of in Mount Monganui and now Hamilton as well. Such delicious smoothie bowls and toast and all those good things. She didn't ask me to plug this, but I just think you need to know if you don't know about it. So yummy. Anyway, it was really cool to hear about Stacey's whole experience. So we'll get straight into it. Enjoy episode 54 with Stacey. Hi Stacey, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. So excited to chat all about your wedding. Hi Lydia, I'm I'm so excited to chat to you about it. So good. So to get started with, if you could just tell me a bit about you and your partner, how you guys met and yeah, your life together. Yeah, cool. So um, Dave and I actually met 10 years ago at down in Dunedin. We were both studying in the same halls of residence um became friends but yeah nothing more than that um and then he kind of we kind of like did our own thing at uni and then um I moved to Mount Monganui where he was living when I was about 25 I think um 24 maybe and then um I kind of thought like oh who's in the mount that I know I didn't really know many people here and um yeah we got we became friends um better friends I guess in the mount and then started dating probably a year into our friendship um and that was probably when I was about 26 we were both 26 and dated for about a year and a half two years and then split up um and then kind of did our own thing for a while I think um we were split for about two years and both of us were kind of like okay well that chapter's done um Dave now admits that he thought back then, like when he first met me, he was like, well, this chick. <laughs> and then when we were dating that time, he, he really thought that I was the one. And then when we split, um, I actually ended up with a, another partner and he kind of, um, he, he kind of like had this kind of internal battle of being like, whoa, like I so thought she was the one. Um, and yeah, kind of, kind of accepted that, that he was wrong and his um, intuition was wrong. Um, and then we came back together July last year so 2023 and um, neither of us at the the time or even when I was um, we were both separated we were both just like oh yeah that sucks that that didn't work out you know I I really I did um, enjoy enjoy spending time with him but I was like oh maybe he just wasn't you know we weren't meant to be in a relationship so yeah we ended up getting back together July last year and it was a complete surprise to, to both of us and to everyone around us yeah oh wow such a um crazy story of like friendships and then like the right timing hey coming back together but yeah so interesting to hear that and so you guys dated for a while so kind of was like reconnection and then like all on from there can you um tell us a bit about your proposal story how that all went down yeah um it was quite funny because we hadn't really we both hadn't really told anyone that we were you know back together we were both just trying to figure out what was um what what was happening and like what the feelings were and if it was like um like yeah they were very very intense feelings I guess and and for both of us to just think that that was the end of it um, when we dated last time and then to come back together and just be like what what is happening (laughs) um and so I guess we both just wanted to figure that out you know we told it we told the people that we'd see on on a daily basis but I have a lot of friends overseas and um and uh I guess yeah we told our parents but apart from that we hadn't really like shared it I guess on on socials or anything um uh and then so so when we got proposed I mean when we got engaged sorry we I was like oh my god like (laughs) 
I'm going to have to tell people that I've got a boyfriend. <laughs> I, so many of my friends had no idea that I was, I was, had a boyfriend and that it was Dave, my ex. So, um, so yeah, we, we were together for three months. Um, and, and I think, you know, we had had um, honest conversations about what we wanted. Um, and, and actually previously, um, about six months before, we were at a festival and I saw Dave and, you know, we had a little catch up and, and I asked him what he was up to. And um, he had told me that he was really trying to bring in a um, long term partner and, and he wanted kids soon and he wanted to get married soon. And um, he had no idea who that was going to be, but he, that's what he was um, really aiming for. <laughs> um, and I was just like, oh, that's cool. Like me being single and having best time in life. I was like, oh, that's so cool. That is so not the path I'm on right now but good on you blah 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 so anyways um I guess he did some great manifestation um and so yeah so we the engagement story he so he was away for about a week um had no service down south and then um came back up and um we had talked about uh, you know getting married one day because we just I guess we we knew that at this time it was it was so good and it was um it felt very right so I was kind of like oh yeah you know maybe in the next two years because I we both we both talked about it we wanted to get married um so this the, the engagement came or proposal came it's a complete surprise <laughs> three months in um and we so he'd been away um and it was a Monday it was really sunny um down in the mount and um the waves were were beautiful it was like one of those beautiful days where the the water was crystal clear beautiful longboarding waves so in the morning um i we woke up and we're like oh let's go surfing and then and then i'd said to dave um oh can you just quickly text text ajda and levi our friends um to to tell them we were going and he kind of like took a step back and, and was like oh are they coming and I, and and he was he was just so off it that i was like oh is this is a massive red flag that he doesn't want my friends to be to be out surfing with us because they kind of they'd been friends that I'd made whilst we were separated and I was, in my head I was like oh like that that's so not like Dave but very um very interesting that he doesn't want some friends there so anyways there was about eight of us surfing in the end that morning um and it, yeah, it was a great surf and then we kind of came in and a few of us had um we live we live on the beach so we had some pancakes out in the sun it was just like such a beautiful still day. Um, and then Dave was like, oh, should we go go check the surf again, like see what it's doing? Um, and I was like, we were walking down the stairs, just me and him. And I think he was like, okay, sweet, this is the time. And then I, I like stopped halfway down the stairs. I was like, oh, Josh, do you want to come check the surf? And Dave was like, oh, fuck. Um, so Josh came and checked the surf with us. Um, and I think Dave was really wanting to do it then, but the waves were great and, um, it ended up just being him and I that wanted to go surfing. Um, so we got our boards and then we kind of like walked down the alleyway to get to the waves and, um, I was sprinting down and cause I was so keen to get in the water and he was like, wait, hold up, wait for me. And I was like, what? <laughs> shut up like you run after me but yeah so so I waited and then before the surf I was like about to jump in he was like oh should we let's do some stretching and I was and in my head it all makes sense now but in my head I was just like wow we never stretch like this isn't gonna be a very big surf <laughs> and then I was doing one of um the I was we put our boards down and I was doing that like uh, hard to explain on a podcast but I kind of was like, standing I had my arms spread out wide and I was flinging my arms around kind of stretched the upper back I don't even know if it's stretched warming up whatever um and he walked around me and I flung him in the face with my hand like absolutely whipped him um and then he kind of like had to like hold my shoulders to like hold me down and 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 kind of like got quite serious and I at the time I just because we had had a week apart of no no chat at all I think I thought he was just kind of saying like he was saying all these really nice things and I thought he was just trying to tell me how much how much I meant to him um I was I wasn't until he got onto one knee that I was like oh my god what are you doing <laughs> and I'm not like uh I think um what do you call it when people are um public displays of affection <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm not really into that. So like when you got onto one knee and they were like me and this dude locked eyes and he was just walking his dog right behind Dave and we just locked eyes. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe people are watching this. <laughs> Which is like it's it's so beautiful to watch. And uh, but in my head I was just thinking, oh my god, I can't believe 
I can't believe there's so many people around watching this. <laughs> and poor Dave is just on his knees and yeah, he said some really nice things and he just he brought out a shell as well. He didn't have a ring, he had um yeah, we we're, we're using my great grandma's ring to um refurbish, but um he yeah, he had the shell and then I just kind of it was it was an interesting feeling. I didn't um I didn't cry and it was more of just like, is this actually happening? And um yeah, so anyways we I said yes and um we chatted on the beach for a while and then went for a really nice surf and then just in the surf we were just we were just talking and um I guess that's when uh, we were both like oh should we have a wedding and we we're like yeah definitely and then he uh, he was like when do you want to have it I was like I don't know maybe a couple of years time years time and he was like let's do it this summer and I was like absolutely not like I don't think you know how to like I don't think you know the wedding industry you can't you can't just plan a wedding it was October by this point and I was like I just don't think that that's possible and he was like oh sweet yeah you you probably know more than I do and then anyways we celebrated that evening um with some friends and um I had a, a very large night it was so much fun um but but then that night everyone you know you are everyone asks and and wants to know if you can have a wedding and and Dave was like yeah I want to have this one one this summer and I was like we just can't I don't know how that's possible <laughs> I don't like if we want to have a proper wedding like I think everyone would be booked out and then everyone was like no you can do it and so I, I guess my mind um my I was expanded in a way and thought, okay. And then literally the next day, I spent seven days just planning this wedding. And, and when, so that would have been late October and we got married in, on March 17th. So that three months, five months, five months. Pretty quick turnaround. Yeah. Four months, four and a half months. So yeah, anyways, yeah. we did it. It's great. <laughs> so cool. I love that story. It just sounds like very you and he definitely got the surprise factor <laughs> with the proposal as well <laughs> so you planned something a little bit different you might say than a lot of people for your wedding which I love and I'm excited to hear about but yeah had you thought about your wedding um before you got engaged did you have like a vision in mind and um yeah for like the vibe and style and where did you sort of start with planning choosing a venue all of that I guess we, so we went to a wedding um, of our, our good friends and they had a three-day wedding where we arrived Friday night, the wedding was on Saturday and then everyone was still on, on the land on Sunday and I, I that was probably four or five years ago but um, yeah, I guess as a, as a chick, I don't know if most if most girls do this but you kind of go to weddings and you just like, you pick things and you're like, wow, well, I really enjoyed that or I didn't really love that but yeah, I just remember going to this wedding and just thinking that was honestly, if I ever have a wedding one day, we I want to do that. When we got, yeah, I guess my, my vision was clear in that we wanted, both of our, our visions were, were clear in that we really wanted to base it around um, community and um, we wanted, our, our main um, want I guess was for everyone including us to have like the best weekend and it not just to be like oh we have to like fly over for this wedding and you know like of course our friends want to be there but we really wanted it to be like a, an experience for them as well um, so the um, venue was like a very easy um, decision for us Dave's parents have a beautiful property out in Oropi which is in, um, in Tauranga um, and Dave had actually had uh, hosted a festival a year earlier, um, and it was it was the terrible weather season when it was just all rain. So yeah, this poor festival was just like torrential rain. But anyways, it worked, and, and they could have quite a few people on the land. So we approached Dave's parents, and, and as soon as they said yes, we were like, sweet, this is this could work. And then um, yeah, I guess we. We called it Lieberfest, which is, um, Lieber means love in German. Dave's um, half German, his dad's German. So, yeah, we um, we, made, we made it a, a festival, and I guess both him and I really love um, love going to festivals and love all aspects of um, what festivals bring for everyone. So, yeah, we it was, it was just very easy. Everything flowed um, easily, and the planning was so enjoyable for me, and, yeah, so good I love that um cool that you had that special name for it as well and um, meaningful to have it on like family land too yeah so did you have um sort of your top priorities or like what were the most important elements for that wedding celebration in terms of different vendors vibe all of that 
Um, yeah, I guess when when I started, so like the next day, literally, we were quite hungover, and I was just like, okay, sweet, if we're gonna do this wedding, I I'm lucky enough to own own a business with one of my best friends, so I literally spent seven days. I didn't do anything else but planning this wedding, and I, within that week, I was like. I kind of based the date around um, my top priorities were photographers and food. And then um, I locked, as soon as I locked one of them in, which was food first, I then I kind of planned around that. Um, and then, of course, like trying to figure out dates of when it would work for, for close friends and people that were very important to us. But with four months notice, it was like, okay, well, we're just going to, it's never, it's not going to work for everyone. Um, and being March, we also, Dave's parents were going away the end of March for three months and we're like, we're not going to have a winter wedding. We wanted to do this summer. So we kind of had like a very tight, tight, um, time frame. but yeah, as soon as I locked the food in, then I kind of worked around that. And, um, I, yeah, I guess food was like the main priority. We originally started and we were like, oh, let's just like dad can cook. <laughs> so glad we didn't do that. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was, it turned from like being a pretty, um, I don't want to say Bundy, but it turned from being a, um, a cheaper wedding where we were like, oh, we could just do like a potluck. It could be like, it doesn't need to be a marquee, blah, blah, to like a pretty expensive wedding. But no, no regrets at all. It was so fun. Yeah. Oh, so good. It all um, starts adding up quickly <laughs> for sure. And, um, yeah, can you tell me a bit about your wedding outfits? Did you have a few over those days? And, um, yeah, what was that process like, like finding your dress or getting it made? Um, so for the Saturday, I just – I didn't think I'd ever be one of those these girls, but, like, the, the closer it came to my wedding, I was just like, I need an outfit for the Saturday. Um, so I had this beautiful, like, um, so the Saturday, I, sorry, I probably haven't mentioned, but the Sunday was our wedding. So we had people come up, arrive on the Saturday and then we had people Sunday, um, and Monday and Sunday was literally like the only date that could work for the food and, and everyone else. And it actually worked out perfectly because then, because on like no one has weddings on Sunday. So then the makeup artist, the, everyone was like, yeah, I can definitely do that. So that was great. Um, and thank goodness because the Friday was torrential rain, like so bad. And Saturday, Sunday, Monday, it was just like a beautiful, crystal clear, sunny day. So um, on the Saturday, I had this like really nice silver kind of like sexy dress and I didn't even get into it. I was just wearing my clothes from the day. It was a full on day of like, we had some community building activities. We had like saunas. Um, we had like a cacao ceremony. Um, and then we had um, pizza. Um we got a pizza oven at our house. So we had like a big like pizza, some speeches on that night. So I was just kind of like running around, not like a headless chicken, but you know, there's so many people to talk to that I just kind of forgot about it. And then I got into bed and I was like, oh my God, my dress. But um, it was a pretty casual night. I, I probably would have looked a bit extra if I'd, if I'd worn it, to be honest. Um, and then for the actual wedding, um, I was very lucky to... Um, to get my mum to make my dress so she's yeah she's a great seamstress and um it was kind of like a no-brainer but but also at the start I kind of thought I was like oh like I should probably go try some dresses on and in hindsight I think that would have been so cool to do to with some of my friends and and we planned on doing it but it just got it it was just so busy for um for everyone including myself that I kind of let, let that idea go but um I think I would have loved to do that with friends because uh, yeah listening to your podcast it does it does sound like such a nice thing to do with friends but also I think if I'd done that I would have been so confused with what I'd wanted um I literally I saw this one dress on um I think it was just Instagram and I kind of just looked at it and I was like oh well that's it um and I looked at the price and it was like eighteen thousand dollars and I was like well that's just ridiculous so I showed it to mom and she's like oh yeah I could make I could make that um so we we kind of copied the idea um and ran ran with it I guess but it, it did look very different to the original uh, of what we were kind of going off but yeah the style and everything was um quite similar um and it's definitely it's not I think if I tried it on a shop I probably wouldn't have bought it I would have got something that was probably more fitted for my body but I remember 
choosing it. I was like, this probably isn't like the best fit for my body, but I love it. And we just went for it. And um, yeah, my poor mum, it was, <laughs> it was a big process for her, way bigger than um, I think she'd ever thought. Like just trying to find the materials because she makes clothes, but she's, she's never made a wedding dress. She's made like bridesmaids dresses and stuff, but like just trying to find the right silk and um yeah, I guess I am quite particular. So poor mum, I'd go around every time. And I remember at one point, we just could not find the right material. It was probably January at this point. I was like, I was just crying. I was like, I'm just going to go buy one. And she was like, no, please don't. We're nearly there. God, very dramatic. But yeah, she honestly did like the best job ever. And um, she told me on the Saturday, on the Thursday, she was hemming it. And she completely um, cut it like 10 inches too short somehow on the front. And she just, she spent all night fixing it. She had to undo the whole thing and, um, yeah, redo that whole, that whole bit. And everyone knew except me. <laughs> Poor mum. But, yeah, she um, she did a great, great job. And then towards the end, um, I went to a baby shower and I, I kind of showed a friend what I was wearing. She's like, you need a veil. I was like, oh, my God, I do. <laughs> so within the first, the week of the wedding, I was like, mum, we need to make a veil. So she was making veils and she was making, like, neck pieces, um, and then also, I so I, with the dress that I have had, it was quite long, and I knew that I, I wanted to party all night. So um, I looked into buying one, and I just couldn't find the right one. Um, so then we, I was out with mum having a few drinks one night, and I just like, I just like looked at her, and I was like, mum, <laughs> do you reckon you could make me a second dress? <laughs> and I showed her what I wanted, and she was like, yeah, I could do that. She's so good. Um, so she ended up making me this the second dress that I've got hardly any pictures in but yeah I changed it into it um before our first dance and it was so much fun I was pretty much barefoot the whole the whole wedding most people were um and not most people sorry <laughs> a lot of people were but yeah um yeah and that was that, those were my outfits and I um I feel so so lucky to have a mum that can that can just whip, whip something like what she did up it was um yeah, so good and saved obviously so much money. Yeah. Oh, so special for her to do that for you, even though a bit of a stressful process and quick turnaround as well. And um, who was in your bridal party? Did you find that quite an easy process choosing them? Uh, I started off with four and I ended up with seven bridesmaids. <laughs> and Dave, Dave as well started off with four and he ended up with seven, which um, yeah, it was, I think I think for like the whole the whole theme as well for our wedding we just like with the budget we kind of blew that out and with the bridesmaids and groomsmen we, every time we just like thought of something we we're just like yeah let's just do it fuck it fuck it <laughs> <laughs> and so with the bridesmaids I was like oh yeah I always knew that um the four the four originally that that I picked um it was just like a no-brainer my sister um two of my best friends and then a really good friend from school um and then as the time kind of came went on I had, it, it kind of just felt right to add more but in my head I was like we can't have like 14 people standing up there but like of course you can do what you want but at the start I was like oh my god no you can't do that it just looks there'll be way too many people and like probably too much money but um I'm so glad we added we added on so I added on um two two girls two really good friends and they kind of come like we're all three of us are really good friends I was like well if I add Ajna of course I'm gonna add Ruby so then so then Dave was like oh well if you add that person then I'll add this person and so um yeah it was just a really exciting time to I remember adding my last friend Jade <laughs> not last friend but sorry the, the seventh bridesmaid and um I just remember like driving it was like a couple of weeks before the wedding maybe a month before and I just remember driving home to her and I was like oh my god I'm so excited to ask her and it's such an exciting thing um for them and the, just the amount of um the amount of fun we all had together it was um yeah, it was so good having heaps of us. It was a little bit more expensive, but like, oh, so much fun. I would, wouldn't have changed it. So yeah, the process was super easy. Nice to just include everyone definitely like sets the vibe for you on the yeah. day and through the celebrations too. Yeah. And um, how about your guest list? How many people did you have? And was that difficult narrowing that down? Yeah, Um, I think as well for this, we were just like, fuck it yeah fuck it just add that yeah. person <laughs> um so we started with 160 and I think when we 
when we sent out those invites, we kind of like we knew that a lot of people weren't going to be able to make it. Um, so if 160 actually did come, we probably would have been screwed. Um, but yeah, with the invites being like we we invited people, but I really knew that they were busy, I guess, and like couldn't make it. Um, and we ended up with 120. So um, 40 people were either away or overseas, or yeah, couldn't make it. Um, and um invite list Dave we both have pretty small families so it was majority like I always say kids and when I refer to them as kids they're not kids adults <laughs> friends um which which made it um yeah really fun but also we um yeah it wasn't difficult it was more um no none, none of it none of it was difficult I think my parent I didn't invite some family members um and I think you know there were some family discussions about that but like at the end of the day if I haven't talked to them in a couple of years then it, it does, just doesn't make sense to me so yeah we ended up with 120 and it felt it felt great to have um that many people with us yeah nice that's a good number and um you've given us a little bit of an overview but yeah can you tell us about the big day the big few days and um yeah how it all went down and any highlights or favorite moments I kept checking the weather that um that week and it was like pouring with rain <laughs> I like I remember one morning I just could not get out of this mood and I just remember saying today I was like nah I'm just I'm not gonna do it I'm so sorry but like, I'm not having a wedding <laughs> And the rain and everyone was just like, it's just going to, it's going to be as good, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was just being so dramatic, but, um, and then of course, like the next day, you know, it changes. So yeah, the weather report is always, it's always forever changing. But, um, so anyways, on the Friday, it was, um, really bad weather. Um, but me and my, oh, I, I, and also I had strep throat that week. So it was a big, it was a big week leading up to it. Um, I was super sick got some ended up trying to I tried to do it naturally and it just wasn't going so I went on antibiotics and that that helped um overnight which was so good so on the Friday um we so we grew a lot of the flowers ourselves um which was a great um great experience but also I don't know if we'd do it again <laughs> Dave was like because it was such a hot summer Dave ended up we planted um so many flowers that every day he pretty much was watering for about an hour for the first like two months um lightly watering all of these these plants and flowers which yeah it was so cool to be able to pick from our garden but at the same time oh my god if, I now see why florists and um, flowers are like pricey because it's so time consuming and it's difficult you know like a lot of some of our seedlings didn't come through and anyway so we picked some of those flowers, which was cool, and then we went to a um, we went just um to a family friend, and she's got a flower garden, and um, me and three bridesmaids went and picked flowers in the rain, and it was oh, it was so much fun. That was a that was it was a great time to be with them and um, our family friend. She's so beautiful, and we, yeah, we just had so much fun. So we picked a lot of dahlias from her her flower garden, um, and then. Yeah, I guess that day we um, did some last minute things at the flat that I used to live in, um, like making some signs and whatnot. Um, and the whole week leading up, up to it, there was a lot. There was a lot to be done, you know. Like we had to pretty much organise everything because it wasn't a um, a proper like wedding venue. Yeah, it was good. And so then on Saturday, people arrived at um, midday. And we had um, about 80 people staying on the land. So there were those glamping tents, which was such a cool idea. Um, people just arrived and their bed was set up and then you can just leave and, and someone else, you know, the company cleans it up, which was cool. Then we had people tenting and camping and the, everyone brought their like vans if they were sleeping in a van. So yeah, it was so good. Um, and then we had like a opening ceremony. We did some community um, building kind of activities and that was really cool. And everyone was like, that, that was such a great thing. Cause, Cause you know, like if you don't know a lot of people at weddings or like, you know, it's quite hard to like get to know people. So anyways, a lot of people met different people um, and that kind of just set the tone for the whole weekend. And um, then we had saunas going. So everyone was saunering and there's a pool. So people were swimming. Um, then we had a beautiful cacao ceremony, which my friends um, friends held space for under the trees. And um, then we had a nice little pizza evening. Um, so that day was great. But I also was like, I was running around doing like quite a lot of stuff. And, and luckily we had so many people helping. But I think, I do think back on that day and I'm like, oh, imagine if like no one was helping. Like we would have, there would have just been so much to do with, you think you've got it like, 
you think you've got everything like sorted and organized of it oh my gosh no we did not so Saturday was um enjoyable but also a lot of um still kind of running around doing some last minute things um and then Dave and I actually stayed the night together the Saturday night just because of limited space on the land we've got we're building a tiny home so we slept in that it's like half done it was freezing because it was not um white or anything <laughs> But um, yeah, we stayed the night and then the next morning um, we actually had like a church service at the house. So um, they've got a big, very big lounge. So a lot of people um, spent the first hour of the morning kind of um, listening to the church service, which was really cool. And then we um, kind of people were just like, yeah, doing their own thing on the land, which is cool. There was like a yoga class for people to go to. Um, the saunas were still going. Um, and I actually only left, I think I left the house at like 10 30. I was like, so, so the, me and the girls, we arrived in, um, a trailer, like with these like colorful, um, <laughs> what do you call them? Streamers on the back. Um, we were getting ready at another house down the road and I was like laughing at myself. I was like, what the hell? I was like trying to reverse my truck and to get on this trail. I was the one bringing the trailer to the house. I was like still running around at 10 30 in the morning but it didn't matter but I was just like laughing at myself like what what am I doing putting this yeah putting this trailer onto my truck and I'm meant to get married in like five hours <laughs> I just I remember like leaving the house because there were so many people there and just driving and putting on I was just by myself and you know it would it would be a whole week of socializing with people like arriving um, and I just remember driving it was such a nice day and I was like I think I cried. I was like, oh my God, this is the best day ever. Like, this is so much fun. But everyone had already had so much fun. I just couldn't believe. I guess you just, yeah, sometimes in life you're just like, what? Is this my life? That's why I have one of those moments of just being like, oh my God, I'm loving this. And I, I love Dave and I can't wait to marry him. So, anyways, arrived at the house and yeah, we had some um, seven of us, seven of us girls um, drinking champagne and getting our makeup done which was so much fun um and we got to the ceremony in our trailer which was so good we arrived and we kind of like people everyone was like sitting down a hill um in one of the other paddocks and um that's where the ceremony was and we arrived and we were playing music on our boom and um we like mum said that when we arrived everyone like looked up and she was like you she told us she's like you sounded like this African tribe coming in and everyone was like what was happening but it was yeah it was so good um and then the whole ceremony was beautiful um we kind of did it differently and we didn't have like the classic kind of um traditional um ceremony I guess we didn't have a celebrant we had a priest um and I remember yeah everything we had a, and we had a live band um and because I hadn't seen the whole ceremony. Um, but yeah, I remember like getting to Dave and just being like, oh my God, wow. And I just remember like looking back at everyone and just like looking at the flowers and the beautiful trees and like people playing music. I was just like, whoa, like this is insane. So yeah, we had a beautiful ceremony. Um, and yeah, one of the one of the cool things that I think we did um, in the ceremony was we had... And it was explained to all the guests before so that it wasn't awkward or anything. But um, we had, once we'd, we'd been married, got married, um, we had two minutes of silence where Dave and I just kind of like looked at each other and um, the, the band played, oh, sorry, actually it wasn't silence. It was just like presence. Um, and the band played a song and um, we kind of like, I guess everyone witnessed us in that moment. Um, getting more like that we were married um and yeah that was a really beautiful moment to I guess I guess sometimes they're always a little bit rushed maybe um yeah the and we didn't we didn't have a time frame which was amazing because because we were at our own property um so that was one of my favorite moments and I, I remember like looking at them and then about one minute and I just like burst into tears <laughs> and my friends behind me thought I was just like laughing and one of my friends was like oh I hope this is not the time to laugh Stacey but yeah it was just I was like bawling my eyes out at how beautiful everything was and we had dogs around and the dogs were just so present and um, we didn't have any photos or, or videos during the ceremony just so that it would create more um, presence. A lot of people said that it was like, yeah, one of the most beautiful ceremonies they'd been to and I think that's um, down to um, what land we were on and um, I don't know, there was just some, it was a different energy and yeah, yeah, that was great. Um, and then we had some beautiful dinner and cocktails and um, 
we had the yeah a, a great night. The speeches were were so good, and everyone had had the best time. And we also we did a flash. The chicks did a flash mob, which was so much. <laughs> We, I'd like started planning it for a couple of months before and I was like, first started with like all the girls, I was like, everyone, we're going to do a flash mob and then, and then we kind of went to, okay, let's, maybe that's just the bridesmaids can do it, it's a little bit too hard to organise, but we ended up going to like most of the chicks um, doing this flash mob, so it was at, at the end of this year, in, end of the speeches and um, we'd planned it for one of my bridesmaids to be, say at the start, to just be like, oh, like, I, can, I can take time on my speeches, like, you know, DJ, just cut me off if you want to cut me off, like, blah, blah, blah. And so, anyways, he ended up at the end of it, and this was all planned, like, he was going to start playing the music when she said this one keyword, and he started playing this music, and everyone was like, oh, my God, they're actually cutting her off. Like, this is so much. <laughs> um, but we, yeah, then, like, slowly girls started getting up, and then I think people figured out what was going on. But, yeah, that was a great time, and I loved organising it, and it was just, like, great wahine energy. <laughs> and then that kind of kicked off the dance floor. So, um, yeah, that was a great night. The, I think because it was a Sunday, so it was a Monday morning that um, the noise control ended up coming at 4.30 in the morning. And I remember um, Dave's parents coming down and telling us to turn off the music. And I just remember thinking, oh, my God, it's, like, 1, 1 a.m. Damn it. <laughs> Everyone thought it was, like, yeah, midnight. And we looked at the clock and we are like, oh, my God, it's 4.30. How did this happen? Yeah, it was a great night. Oh, that's amazing. Must have been <laughs> to go that long. And, um, yeah, I love that. So many cool moments. And, like, yeah, I love that you're really intentional about, like, building community and being really present throughout the whole thing and just yeah having all those different things for your guests and yourself so special and um yeah I think something not everybody thinks about um or yeah this sort of like this cookie cutter way to do weddings I guess and like things you're expected to do but you can totally just make it your own so Love that you did that. And was there anything you found really hard in the wedding planning process or that you look back on and regret or do a bit differently? Mm. Um, not really. I loved I loved the whole process. And like part of me is like, oh, wow. I think when I was at high school, I was like, I want to be a wedding planner. <laughs> and um, yeah, no, I loved I loved all of it. And the, yeah, the only, I guess, um, the only thing that I would, I would, probably do differently is just to maybe be a little bit more oh I say I'm organized but I guess be a bit more organized with doing doing more the week of and um I guess uh, yeah we left a few things probably a little bit too last minute so we were doing quite a bit on the Saturday which was fine um but it would have been nice to just fully be like okay sweet I'm done like even the Sunday morning before the wedding I remember like running yeah running around trying to put the trailer on um trying to like orga- I don't know there were a few things that I was trying to organize to tell the bar we had some um friends friends do the bar and I remember just like voice noting them whilst I was getting my makeup done like this is where the gin is this is where that is like it was so unorganized for them but it all like it all worked out and there you didn't even notice I didn't notice I don't think anyone else did and um yeah I enjoyed no I enjoyed I enjoyed all of it and did you guys have like a set budget if you're happy to talk about that, even a ballpark figure? And yeah, you said it kind of blew out a bit, but yeah, how did that whole process go? We so we were lucky enough to um both of our parents put we all went third. So um I think if we weren't going thirds, we probably wouldn't have had um as big as a wedding as what we did, but just because, you know, when you're paying like 40k yourself you're just like well that's just ridiculous but when you're only paying so we agreed all 13k each so that brought us to 39k I think if we were like okay 40k ourselves like it's just ridiculous but when it's only 13k you're like oh yeah we could do that (laughs) um so it was so kind of them to um offer that and I, I just don't think I'm that kind of person to be like we need to stick to the budget like we're building our house at the moment and we kind of had a budget to start off with, like a loose budget, but like with everything, I've just been like, why well, I want the better carpet. <laughs> and so I'm just like, I kind of um, accepted the fact that that's just not me and that's all good. And so, yeah, so with a lot of things, um, I, we could have done them on the cheaper side. Like I didn't need, in the end, I like it. I didn't think I needed like signs and like seating plans, but you know, that all adds up. But I, towards the end, I was just like, oh, let's just do it let's just do it so we ended up um 
I didn't write it all down in the, in the end, but I think around 45k. So um, not too much over budget, like 6k over. But um, yeah, it definitely like when we first started, I think I was like 35k easy, but it was so easy to go over. Um, and yeah, I think I probably would have would have had um, some sort of regrets if I if I didn't enjoy my wedding. But like all of it was just so much fun that I think even if we'd spent sixty k, I would have been like, oh, it was so worth it. But I can imagine afterwards feeling feeling a little bit like, oh, that was a lot to spend if it, if it wasn't the weekend that that I envisioned. But everything was just perfect. So yeah. <laughs> so good and um yeah that's a pretty like standard price these days to be honest and cool that you did things like um yeah using family land and then your mum doing the dress and you guys doing the flowers stuff like that so you would have saved in certain areas as well um but yeah that's great for people to hear and did you go on honeymoon straight away what did planning that look like yeah, no, well, it definitely was not our honeymoon. We went to a festival the weekend after. <laughs> but I um, I, I was so sick the weekend after, I, I guess. For the weekend, strep throat had disappeared, but then it kind of came back. Um, oh, it was a different kind of, like, flu, and I was just so sick. But Dave was doing a talk at um, at Earthbeat, so I was um, the, I guess, the... Um, the committed wife <laughs> um and we went to this festival and it was enjoyable but uh, yeah if I wasn't sick it would have been um probably a whole lot better um and then yeah we kind of talked about a honeymoon and I think one day we would love to but at the moment we're trying to finish our house and it just does not feel right to um go away um on holiday when we're trying to um trying to finish trying to finish this build I think we'd just love to finish that and then be able to um relax fully on holiday and um kind of cool to maybe look forward to something in the future yeah who knows when it will be I would love to go to Europe this year but um we just got a dog so I don't know how easy that can be <laughs> yeah yeah something to look forward to for sure and yeah you guys live by the beach anyway so it's <laughs> so good um was there any like helpful websites or apps different resources that you used during the planning process for like finding vendors or inspo or anything like that um I just kind of like the I remember the first day that I was like looking at um who to book and what to book I um used I used Instagram a lot throughout the whole process um which was so helpful uh and then um, one of my bridesmaids actually found um, Anti Bride, which is a yeah, it's a Australian that, so. online magazine, and they yeah they kind of like feature weddings that are a little bit different. And I suppose um, that was that was a lot of my inspiration was to go on this website. They've got some beautiful beautiful weddings on there, um, so I used used that a lot. And we used the Knot for the wedding. Um, like invites and and whatnot and that was so good it was all free and apart from that not much else I I suppose we just like as soon as I found the food food vendor then we kind of you know you can see who they use and their posts and whatnot Instagram is actually so handy for that Instagram what well, yeah it helped a lot so yeah if you can think of anything do you have any advice that you would give to couples planning their wedding at the moment thinking about what we've just talked about the ceremony for us was like so special and for everyone else and I guess it's like we didn't say vows and my dad didn't have to walk me down down the aisle didn't like necessarily give me away um and we had witnesses that um we'd chosen and they were beside us so we ended up having like 15 16 people up there um and our witnesses we've kind of chosen them in like a different way like they didn't we didn't we're actually not legally married yet we haven't got a um celebrant <laughs> um to legally marry us but yeah these witness, our witnesses that we chose we're kind of um because we worked with the priest throughout the whole process like we're having zoom meetings with her about the ceremony and what it was going to mean and um you know what we what we wanted it to look like we um chose witnesses to um be with us throughout life kind of like we chose people who would who we thought would be able to be you know we could call up and be like look we're having having marriage problems can you help um and um just people that we yeah really admire and think that will be able to support us through our marriage um so we did that really differently and I guess um yeah I guess just thinking about the ceremony um and that like what 
what do those vows actually mean to you? And are you just saying them because you're meant to say vows? And and what what is the ceremony actually meaning? Like, are you are you just having the wedding, you know, to have the big party and to um I don't know, is it yeah? I think sometimes oh who knows I could just be making this up in my head, but sometimes it's a bit missed of like what the actual wedding's about and like this this uniting of two different people becoming you know sort of one but still staying two, um and just yeah just to really properly have a think about what you want it to look like because it doesn't have to be you know say your vows then you sign this then you then they say this and it, it can be it can look so so much more different than what um the traditional wedding looks like so yeah I guess that would be my advice and then also just to have I loved having the day before and I can imagine having the you know it's so cool to have a wedding then the day after but like if you can have the wedding I mean, the day before then the wedding, it was like such a good time to like properly talk to people and catch up with everyone. And then on the wedding, you know, I'd seen most of the people that day. There were a few people that couldn't make that day, but I'd seen everyone the day before. So I wasn't having to like talk to this person, talk to that person. It was so easy. And like everyone had been hanging out for like more than 24 hours now. There were like different groups mingling. Um, So that was like, so good so great amazing advice um yeah that's such a good thing to do if you can sort of extend those celebrations and then yeah like you say I think people think of doing a day after thing but yeah the day before is a great option and get married on a Sunday if you want (laughs) it's um you're gonna have vendors more available for sure oh yeah um I love what you said about the ceremony as well I think that's so true that it's such an important part of the day and it's like yeah why you're there uh, kind of and um a lot of people just sort of skip through it or like how can we do it as quick as possible I don't want all these people staring at me or have to say like profess my love in front of hundreds of people and get like anxious about it or yeah just try and get it over with as fast as they can but um yeah I think putting some more thought into that what represents you as a couple and yeah it's quite like a sacred moment so if you can honor that a bit more then yeah yeah, definitely think about what you can do differently and um yeah look into that and what is married life like now semi unofficially officially married (laughs) did you feel like you got any of the post-wedding blues yeah um no I would would call it more like post-wedding bliss I reckon it's been um so I moved as well as you know trying to organize the wedding I moved from my flat into um in with Dave on the Friday so I think that just made it that probably made the whole week way too hectic I was like moving my bed and my everything half an hour away um but yeah we it's been yeah it's been good it's created um a different connection between the both of us and um we're both loving it we we're living out on his parents land with um that's where our tiny home's going to be for a little while and it's so beautiful out there we've got so much land and these fruit trees and we're just eating from eating from the land and got a pool and saunas and um yeah life life feels very easy and and good and um I think I probably would have um wedding wedding blues if if the wedding wasn't what I wanted you know like probably if if it was raining I probably would have <laughs> and maybe I would have thought like oh my god that's my wedding it's all over but I think because everything was way better than I ever envisioned I, I we're both just so stoked um and yeah loving loving life together and feeling feeling ready for this this next chapter <laughs> yeah amazing been so lovely to chat to you and hear all about that is there um anything else you want to add as we wrap up uh no no I think that's all but um I just want to I want to say that you're doing such a great job I started oh, listening thanks. to your your podcast after my wedding unfortunately but I've listened to quite a few few and I think that they're so helpful and um yeah so cool for people to listen to and get some get some great ideas from so yeah well done <laughs> oh thank you so grateful for you coming on oh, thanks thanks for having me